This video was created along with a slideshow. Refer to the slideshow for specific details such as the length of leads and where to connect the jumper wires. To build a power supply cable with an inline switch for your robot, you first need to cut the leads of each piece as shown. To demonstrate, I'll cut and strip the JST pigtail. If it comes with the positive and negative leads twisted together, you'll have to start out by untwisting them. Once that's done, you're going to want to straighten out the wire. Uh, to do this, make sure you grab the wire next to the connector instead of the connector itself. Otherwise, if you try to straighten it out, you're probably going to end up pulling the wire out of the connector. Once the wires are nice and straight, measure them uh, as shown in the slideshow or at the beginning of this video. I like to use my fingernail to indent the spot that needs to be cut. Once you've cut the lead to length, strip about a quarter inch of the insulation off. Uh, be sure to use the gauge that corresponds to the thickness of the wire. In this case, uh, the 22 gauge works pretty well. Once you've cut and stripped the leads for each component, apply a little bit of flux to the bare metal. When you heat it up while you're applying the solder, the flux will actually clean impurities off the wire so that the solder sticks better. Before you try to solder two wires together, put a little solder on the end of each wire. This is called tinning. Tinning the leads for the switch will take a little longer because those wires are a lot thicker and it takes the soldering iron longer to heat up so much metal. Just keep the side of the iron's tip pressed against the metal and be patient and it'll heat up just fine. Once you've tinned the end of each of your leads, you're going to need to cut about three pieces of shrink tubing that are about an inch long a piece. Uh, because I have it on hand, I'm using two black pieces and one red piece, but uh, if you wanted to use clear shrink tubing, that'll work just fine as well, or any color. Once your shrink tubing is cut, slide one piece onto each lead of the battery connector. Slide one more piece onto the negative lead of your JST uh, pigtail. Once you've done this, arrange the pieces the way they're going to be soldered together, just to make sure that you put the shrink tubing where it needs to be. To solder the two wires together, put one in the helping hands and hold the other one right next to it. You shouldn't need to add any solder if you've tended them well. When soldering a thicker wire to a thinner wire, I like to heat up the thicker wire first, and once the solder's melted, then I just press it against the thinner wire and it heats the other one up pretty fast. Once you've soldered all of your wires together, slide the shrink tubing over the soldering connections and then apply heat. I only have a lighter at home, so that's what I'm using, uh, but if you have a heat gun, of course, go ahead and use that. When heating shrink tubing using a lighter, you need to make sure you don't get the flame too close to the shrink tubing or you'll melt right through it. Here you can see I'm moving the flame fairly quickly and I actually twist the wire a little bit as well just to make sure that I don't overheat one side. Once you're done, your power supply cable should look something like this. The next step is to modify your female JST connector so that it plugs into your breadboard nicely. If you've purchased the connector that I uh, suggest then it's going to have a few tabs on the bottom that prevent that from happening and you're going to have to cut them off. Here I'm using a knife to cut them off because that's what most people have at home, but if you have a pair of flush cutters, they actually work much better. Just put it on a breadboard and press until the tab cuts off, and then flip it around and do the same thing to the other side. Once you've cut off both tabs, take a pair of needle nose pliers 
and grab the leads from the bottom of the JST and bend them so they, they stick straight out. This is a right angle JST connector and I chose that because the leads are a little bit longer when they're bent straight so they'll stick further into the breadboard. When you're all done, the leads should stick straight out just like this. The next thing you're going to need to learn is how to make your own jumper wires. You can buy them, but then you don't get to choose the color or the length. The first step is to cut about a quarter of an inch off the end of the wire. Once you've done that, go ahead and grab the end of the wire with some pliers, or you can just use your fingers, but pliers work a little better, and bend it at 90 degrees. Then what I like to do is place that bent end into the one of the holes that this jumper is eventually going to connect to and then I press with my fingernail right above the other hole that it will eventually connect into because then I can mark how long it needs to be and all I have to do at that point is take a pair of uh, wire cutters and cut it about a quarter of an inch past that point. Once I've done that all I have to do is strip off the remaining insulation right where I put my fingernail mark, grab my pliers and bend the other end again, and now I have a jumper that's exactly the right length and the color that I want. Now that you know how to make jumper wires, it's time to start assembling the circuit. Uh, the first step is to put the Arduino in the correct spot. If you're unsure about this, please refer to the slideshow that accompanies this video. Um, the next step is to put in the JST connector and uh, to glue it in place. Make sure that you apply the glue only to the bottom of the JST connector, uh, kind of far away from the leads, on the flat side far away from the leads and then plug it into the breadboard and put a little tiny bit of glue around the edge of it. We need to make sure that no super glue gets on the leads, in between the leads, and the little pieces of metal inside the breadboard, otherwise it won't conduct electricity. The next step is to put in the jumper that conducts electricity from one side of your breadboard to the other. That will go in the second row. It's a little bit hard to see, almost below the Arduino, but not quite. Then, plug in the jumper that connects the ground to the left power rail, and another jumper that conducts or that connects the ground to the right power rail. Plug in a red jumper, as shown, and you'll see why later. Cut and bend a diode, as shown, and plug it in to bridge the gap, uh, the groove in the breadboard. Make sure the gray end is farther from the JST connector. Cut and bend a green piece of wire, as shown, to uh, stretch between the one end of the diode and the VN pin on the Arduino. Once you've plugged in that jumper, you can go ahead and press the Arduino all the way down into the breadboard. Cut bend and plug in two jumpers to connect the ground pins of the Arduino to the ground side of each power rail. Cut and bend a long stemmed tactile switch as shown and connect it to pin D9 on the Arduino and the ground side of the power rail. Plug in your voltage regulator as shown and make sure to orient it correctly. If it's reversed it will cause problems. Cut and bend a jumper out of white wire as shown and plug it into the hole that corresponds to the white wire on your servo cable. Cut a pair of male header pins and plug those into the remaining holes. The header pins will plug into the power rail while the lead plugs into a pin that corresponds to the Arduino. 
do the same thing for your other motor. Uh, the right motor should plug into pin D5 and the left motor should plug into pin D6. The next step is to attach the motors and the breadboard to your frame. Uh, here you can see I've already painted the sensor slots for my frame. Um, you can do that before or after you do the following steps. Grab the ball bearing and uh, place it right on top of the hole or the socket for the caster ball and press firmly. You should hear a satisfying snap and if it's seated properly it'll look just like this. Now, place a motor into the frame of your robot as shown and grab some screws to firmly attach it to the frame. When you use metal fasteners with plastic, you need to make sure not to over tighten them. Otherwise, you will strip out the hole. What that means is, you will tear up the plastic inside that hole so that the threads on the screw have nothing to grab. In short, tighten the screws until they are snug and no more. Once you've finished with the first motor, do the same thing to the second motor. Once both motors have been fastened to the frame, it's time to attach the wheels. One side of the wheel has a hole with grooves around the edge. Press that side of the wheel onto the servo motor. Uh, depending on which motors you're using, you may have to press pretty hard. Once the wheel is pushed all the way onto the servo motor, grab the screw that goes with the servo motor and use it, screw it in there to hold that wheel in place. Continue tightening until the servo motor churns and not too much beyond that. Again, we don't want to strip the plastic that's inside there. Once you've attached the other wheel to your robot, it's time to put your breadboard onto your robot. Do not peel the wax paper off of the back of the breadboard and stick it to your robot. We're going to use rubber bands to hold it on. Once your breadboard is in place, flip your robot over and grab your power cable. Lay the power cable on the back of the mouse uh, as follows with the switch on the left side left hand side motor and the battery snap ready to uh, accept a battery and then just slide your battery into place and uh, connect the two. Once the batteries uh, firmly in place and connected. Flip the robot over and plug the other end of the cable into the uh, female uh, side of the JST connector. Next, we're going to hot glue the switch into place. So heat up your hot glue gun and squirt uh, hot glue all over the back side of that switch. Uh, make sure to cover the whole uh, surface and then just press that right onto your servo motor and uh, hold it there for just a little bit until the glue solidifies. Once that's done, wrap a rubber band around the front end of your robot to help hold the breadboard in place. Then unplug your servo motors and weave them through a second rubber band. Wrap the rubber band around the back part of your robot, uh, catching the rear of the Arduino and uh, the back side of the servo motor uh, mounts on the frame. If you've done everything correctly, uh, it should be holding the battery cable uh, in place as well. Then reconnect your left servo motor to pin D6 on the Arduino and your right servo motor to pin D5 on the Arduino. Then, bundle the servo wires 
as I'm showing you here, doubling them back on themselves a couple times. And grab a twist tie. It doesn't need to be very long. Just a couple twists to hold everything in place. And that'll keep your servo wires from getting caught up in your wheels and generally just impairing your robot's movement. If you've done everything correctly, you should be able to push the switch on your power cable and hopefully see the motors twitch and the LED blink on your Arduino if you haven't loaded any other programs on it already.